back with us on the conversation. No, we're not talking about rubbish. We're talking about waste management, uh, solid waste management. And the chairman of the National Solid Waste Management Authority in uh, Jamaica, Dennis Chung, is my guest. For a long time, Dennis, for, for, for much of my life, I can, I've heard of instances of graft, corruption, mm. downright theft at the NSWMA. And in my time as a journalist, I've had to report on many issues about the NSWMA under previous leadership, which really have painted the, the authority in a bad light. The truth is, the NSWMA is among a handful of state agencies or state bodies in Jamaica, public bodies, where they are seen as dumping grounds for political activists. So you hear the stories of how many people sitting waiting to collect their check mm -hmm. paychecks on a fortnight Friday, having never done lifted a straw for the previous two weeks. But you go to the NSWMA and other agencies to collect mm -hmm. your check because that's how the politicians set it up. You hear about well, excesses when there's a fire and the, the, the exorbitant fees for uh, tractor mm -hmm. rental and the provision of lunches. In fact, one of the very last stories I wrote when I was in the newsroom in Radio before coming here was about a, a, a multi-million dollars that were claimed for some menial things, the provision of sandwiches, almost millions of dollars worth of sandwiches. I didn't even know people could eat so much sandwiches. <laughs> so the point is, the NSWMA has this stigma, has this reputation. Yeah. And I want to ask you, as you teased the, the issue of the gas card fraud at the end of the first segment, how have you managed to change that culture or that perception about the NSWMA by actually weeding out the persons who were responsible for these things? All right, the first thing that we did as a board is put in place a very strong internal audit committee, board subcommittee, that is chaired by one of my directors, Norman Brown, mm -hmm. and it has worked very well. We, 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 we raise all the internal ish audit issues. He has a meeting every other month and he has uncovered a lot of things. We ensure that everything that is raised by the internal auditor is followed up and we get responses on it. So the gas card fraud that we uncovered, for example, where in one instance, a truck that has not been driving for two years was receiving gas mm -hmm. on the card. Mm -hmm. Some 30 trucks after, right, we have implemented the gas card. We're losing a hundred odd nine, a hundred and odd thousand liters less per gas per year. Yes. Using 30 more trucks. Yes. So you understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes. Right? So we've saved a lot of money there. And that is just one instance of some of the things that we've done. But additionally, what we did very importantly is that we ensured that the, the board put in place uh, an effective and he has proved to be very effective executive director. Yes. At the time, people were saying, boy, is a political appointee. And I said so. Yeah, not so. I mean, the fact of the matter. He was the political that, appointee? No, no. Hold on. Let, no, let, let, no. Let, let, me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Is he, was he a political appointee who did well or is doing well, or was he not a political appointee? All right. So it, 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 he was not a political appointee. And let me tell you why I say that now, right? The Pope is not Catholic, Dennis. No, well, well, <laughs> well, let me tell you why I say that yes. now, right? The board went through a very extensive exercise. Yes. Um, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was recommended, certainly, by a political person. Yes. However, what happened is that the minister didn't interfere with the process of the selection. Yes. So we went through a selection process, right, where we engaged a professional firm to go through everything. At the time, Audley was, was acting as, as chief technical officer. And by Audley, you mean Audley applied, Gordon? Audley Gordon. Yeah, for the benefit he of the He applied for the position. Yes. He went through the same interview process like everyone else, right? And I've said it time and time again. There are some people who did not want Audit to be appointed yes. to ED, yes. right? And after we went through the process of interview, he turned out to be the best person suited for the position, yes. right? 
This is after going through because the directors who are on the board, if it was someone who was just pushed in, I guarantee you, you'd have seen resignations happening. But, right? but, that, but so, so, so you're telling me about the process that actually happened. My yeah. information is that Mr. Gordon was earmarked by the incoming party, which was the JLP administration under Andrew Holness, earmarked as the man for the executive director role as, as, as the NSWMA. And my information is that whatever the process was going to be and however the process was handled, Audley Gordon better come out top of that selection and, well, and, and well, get that I, job. I can, I can tell you. That's my information. Yeah, but I, I, I can tell you that whatever the earmark was, right? Mm. The decision of the board was that if that was done, if we had seen where someone else came out better, yes. right? And this, this is a scoring thing, you know? Yes. Score, individual scores. It's scientific. You, could, you can go back and look at it. Right? Yeah. Right. So you can look at it. Yeah. I guarantee you there would have been resignations. Mm. Well, what so is true is that Mr. Gordon, by all accounts, has done, has done well. well. That, 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 uh, and that, and that's the most I, important I, I, thing. And, and let me tell you, George, because what we realized at the time, we had, and, and remember this also, the executive director of the NSWMA does not get paid very well when you compare it. Yes, that's so, true. And, and because of the stigma, what a lot of people don't understand is that we didn't have a lot of high-quality people applying for the position. Yes. People who were applying for the position were people who were out of a job or something like that. Mm -hmm. And when we looked at it, we said, well, you know what? <clears throat> the realities that we face is that in a stuff we may don't necessarily need someone who has a PhD because... In the role of executive director. Right, yes. because... You have a PhD and you go talk to those people down by Riverton. Yes. <laughs> PhD, yeah, you know, it won't no, help you. No, no, you no. need someone who is street smart. Yes. Right? You need someone who is organized. Yes. And he's a very good organizer. Yes. Right? He has his and talents, Mr. Yes. Gordon does. And you need someone who has the ear of the politicians in order for us to get the resources that we need. Yes. And he has the politicians' right. ear. And therefore, when, when everybody looked at that, they say, you know what? Based on what he was doing at the time, too, we said, boy, this is the best bet for us. And my board stood up mm. and they said, listen, irrespective of what is being said publicly, we have gone through the process, right? And there are professionals on the board. Yes. And we have made a decision based on what we think is in the best interest of the organization. And therefore, we're going down the road. So what we did is we said, OK, maybe Audley doesn't have the technical thing so what we did is got technical people around to him. To support him. To support mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Because what you want to head an organization is not necessarily someone who is technically sound, yes. but a leader. Yes. Someone who people yes. follow. And I can safely say today that he has done extremely well. I'm happy you said that. that. I'm happy you said that because I had reservations. I raised <coughs> those reservations yeah. publicly. I knew, based on my information, that that was the job that the administration wanted him to yeah. get. I, at the time, wasn't happy with the appointment. But what? Hindsight is 2020. Yeah, very well. And it is and, that and, he's and, been the man. I would credit the job. to the minister. Yeah. When we were going through the process, the minister never picked up the phone once yes. and called yes. and said, This Make is my man. He beyond, never did that. Be, be beyond the executive director, though, the yeah. issue of the NSWMA <clears> being a dumping ground for political operatives who do, who do no work, yet draw a salary. Is that happening at the NSWM no, or no, under we've, your watch? We've, 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 when we went there, yes. those things were in place. What I know is that we've eliminated. How did you do that? Audit committee. Hmm. The, one, of, one of the mandates that we have with our audit committee and to our internal auditor, raise the issues. We will deal with it. And we put in place system. One of the first things to understand also, George, why these financials are so important is that you cannot run an organization without proper financial information. Yes. So the first board meeting we went to and the set of financials that were presented to us, I looked at the balance sheet and I said, and I'm an accountant, eh? A chartered accountant. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we have $200 million in inventory. This mm. is great. Yes. And when I questioned the person who presented it, he said, well, it's not really accurate. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I've been carrying forward the figures for seven years now. <laughs> so 
for the first six to seven months, yes. we were running the board with bank reconciliation statements. What? Because we could not rely on the financials. And it was that commitment that we made at the time that, listen, we must get these things up to date because we cannot manage an organization without financials. So that was very important. Hold it right there. We take another break. We're halfway through this program speaking with the chairman of the National Solid Waste Management Authority in Jamaica, Dennis Chung, talking about how the new board and the new management have turned the entity around and are continuing to right-size it for privatization a few months or years from now. <laughs>